Hello everyone. I thank you everyone for registering and attending this webinar. My name is Bandan from GL Communications. Today I am going to present a session on LT Lab Emulation and Analysis. In this session we will mainly concentrate on uh, the components involved uh, in the network and the flexibility of our applications uh, to provide the test solution for this LT Lab. So let's start with uh, just um, going through our LTE network architecture. So on the screen you can see uh, we have this E node B uh, and the complete EPC where we are uh, giving a GL sign where we are going to emulate as well as analysis those particular interfaces. GL mainly deals with uh, the core network of an LTE network. Uh, GL doesn't deal with the uh, RF interface. So uh, we mainly concentrate on the EPC part. As we go through the presentation, we'll see how uh, we simulate each interfaces on the LTE network. So as I'm saying, we are simulating both uh, control plane as well as the user plane, um, which is involved in a data call from LTE. So let's uh, go through how we can achieve using our solution. So this is the complete uh, 4G lab setup with a real E node B. So as you can see, we have a real E node B in the picture and all the EPC elements uh, which are named as a GL, for example, MME, HSS, HGW, PDN gateway and the web servers or a data servers. So this is one setup where we are going to attach a real mobiles or real equipments to LTE network where initiate the data calls. It is complete data call where a mobile is going to get an IP address and connect to an external network. So all the procedures which involves in uh, getting this data enabled will be simulated by GL on the EPC side. So we'll, GL provides one more setup where uh, it is with a simulated E node B where we can have thousands of UVs can be simulated with a core network acting as a GL EPC. Well, uh, now we'll go through a video uh, which explains about how this can be achieved using GL equipments. Yeah, you, we can see here the entire EPC is simulated by the GL equipments. Okay, where uh, the real equipments uh, are going to connect to a real E node B. There we can see there are two mobiles which are connecting to the real E node B and then to the real equipments called MME, HSS, HGW and the PDN gateway. Okay. So we have one more uh, product called packet scan where we are going to analyze the complete LTE calls. Uh, we are connected it through a monitoring port. So uh, all the analysis uh, of this LTE network will be captured on the packet scan. So this is the uh, remote maps where we are going to access all the clients uh, from a single server like we have MME, HGW, HSS and the PDN gateway. So it's a single GUI which is going to provide you access to uh, different elements in the network where uh, our product is running. So once we uh, start this application, we will be having an access to individual nodes. Now I'm going to start a real E node B with a pre-configured file where we are going to configure uh, which band to use, what is the authentication parameters for that particular UV. Okay, once the E node B is started, uh, we have to concentrate on the uh, EPC side. So let's begin with uh, starting all the applications. So this screen will show you uh, how to load the pre-configured configuration and then starting it. So now you can see the link status. Uh, this is the SATP link status between HSS and the MME. You have an access to uh, each of the link status in a single window where you can, uh, you will get a drop down menu from there. Uh, you can select 
the link status of this HSS server now. This is at the MME side where you will be having two HTTP links, one with eNodeB and one with HSS. As the eNodeB is already started, uh, we have this management procedure already uh, taken place. It is uh, completed. Now the EPC is ready for accepting the data calls from the real equipment. You can see the signaling between eNodeB and the maps for this management procedures. Now we are going to turn on the real equipment with a 4G enabled SIM. It searches for the network uh, available 4G network. As you can see on the phone, you will be having this 4G indicator. So this is the call reception window of MME where the call will be received. And the signaling part you can see in this window where we are specifying uh, the initial uh, UV message from the eNodeB is received to the MME where it is forwarded for authentication. And now it is going for a create session request to the SGW for creating a tunnel, data tunnel. Once the attach is completed, now the UV has got uh, its IP address where it can initiate the data packets. It will be having an internet connection where it can browse any website or it is, yeah, we can see uh, we are loading this gl.com website. And this is the packet scan where uh, whatever the call we have made will be captured and analyzed frame by frame. You can see the complete decode of a PDN connectivity request message with all the details. Uh, so this is a simple video which shows how this can be achieved. Now we'll go through uh, the rest of the presentation which uh, focuses mainly on uh, different uh, flexibility of our applications. So these are the interfaces supported by GL with the protocol stacks uh, where we are supporting X2 AP, S1 AP, S6A and on the EGTP side it will be S5, S8 and S11 interfaces. So here are the specification used uh, for developing these protocol stacks. Now let's see uh, the application of uh, the product in a real time. So we can set up a virtual uh, real time network simulating all the network elements which are involved in a 4G wireless lab suit, okay, which allows you to perform a load testing or a functional testing, a regression testing, and even the conformant testing of a network elements where uh, any of the node can be replaced by a DOT and uh, others will be acting by uh, GL maps. So we will be providing a wrap around testing uh, where it is a very effective testing where you will be where you will be having an access to each individual field of an um, network elements uh, call flows. It can be used for uh, testing the monitoring applications which are uh, built to monitor the LTE network. So you can set up a lab lab environment and test your monitoring applications. Whereas if any DOT manufacturer, uh, they can demonstrate their capabilities to the network service providers using our lab. Whereas even LT lab can also be helpful in educational institutions on learning uh, this LTE network, uh, how the calls will be made, what are the different signaling takes place, how the data will flow through different uh, entities in the network, and they can learn the protocols uh, very easily. Now we'll see uh, the different interfaces that will be simulated by GL. Uh, in this LTE network, uh, GL supports this S1AP control plane, S6A diameter, S11 and S5S8 for EGTP protocol. We support the user plane, so S1U, and then it forwarded to PDN gateway and then SGI interfaces. Now let's see uh, how this tool can be useful in testing uh, your equipments. So there are a different ways of testing it. One is a single interface simulation where a uh, user has its own DOT uh, as a E node B. Uh, he wants the network to, to be simulated so that he can test his own E node B. So we are providing only MME, which is going to simulate only S1 AP interface. 
where as you can see in the diagram MME is embedded with all other entities called EIR, HTW, HSS so it's a single application where uh, you can test your E node B as a M GL product acting as an MME so you can test your E node B with the only single interface simulation that is S1 AP so when we go to the next one it's a multi interface simulation so how this is different uh, so user has uh, duties called as E node B HSS, HTW, PGW but he want MME to be simulated then G, GL even provide uh, this flexibility that uh, MME can communicate with the different interfaces or different applications on the network so now GL maps can be used to simulate this S1 AP interface S6A, S13, S5, S8 and other entities also so it is a multi interface simulation where maps will be communicating with different nodes in the network or with the DOTs. So, so single application will be having uh, multi protocols here one is uh, LTS1 and EGTP with diameter so it will be capable of uh, handling the complete call whenever he is testing his DOTs. So one more way of testing is a wrap around testing where the terminating ends will be uh, GL maps where uh, MME will be getting tested with a D, uh, acting as an DOT where GL maps can act as an E node B as well as uh, on the network side it will be SGW and the PGW gateways so he will be testing MME so it's a kind of wrap around testing where MME will be tested against uh, E node B and a serving gateway So here is a list of uh, supported LTE features uh, starting from the attach uh, different kinds of authentication like uh, algorithms called XOR and Melange, security configurations, detach procedure, tracking area update, service request and the establishment of default and the dedicated bearers and the paging call. Our application supports several e bees with a standard S1 AP interface support we support even the handover procedures like intra LT, inter LT, and inter rat handovers. It supports CS fallback, where uh, the call will be fall back to 2G or a 3G network. It supports voice over LTE. So here are the features of our applications, where Maps is completely based on this message, script, and a profile-based architecture where for each protocol uh, it will be having its own message templates uh, which are nothing but a real time messages and protocol simulation will be completely done by the scripting so uh, the state machine is achieved by uh, writing a different scripts depending upon the requirements and we have the profiles uh, which are used for configuring the subscriber details like what, what MC to be used or uh, different authentication parameters and what is the IP address to be assigned to a UV and so on and main thing is uh, it can simulate any node or any interface in the network it is completely a software based architecture and this application can even uh, support for configuring the protocol timers uh, we can define the timers where you can configure a different values for each timers We have a provision to uh, configure different access point names, uh, different IP ranges, DNS servers and even the QoS parameters. We have a configurable user database as I explained uh, those are called as a profiles where you will be configuring this uh, MC, International Mobile Subscriber Identities, authentication parameters and different algorithm selections whether uh, it's going to use XOR or Melange. Coming to the user plane, we support uh, GTPU traffic uh, for HTTP and FTP up to 4 Gbps. 
with providing the statistics like uh, packet total number of packets received transmitted what is the delay latency and the packet loss one more important feature is uh, you can have a negative uh, scenarios for testing uh, your duties we have a report generation both in uh, text as in pdf format we can also even send the reports to a database store it in the database we can define different kpis that is key performance indicators uh, so this is a typical call flow that we are going to achieve uh, with a complete lt lab setup as you can see uh, it is starting from the uv to uh, pdn gateway so the first contact point uh, for maps application is from e node b to mme so we can see the s1 setup request will be successful then followed by uh, attach procedure we will be uh, having this authentication procedure initiated towards hss once the authentication is successful uh, we will be having the security mode command for uh, it will be ciphered for the next next coming messages so nobody can uh, tap it and analyze the call so once security is completed uh, we will be having this creating of sessions from a serving gateway to a pdn gateway uh, here the procedure of creating a tunnel and assigning an ip address to a mobile will be taken place so this is um, uh, we are just trying to explain a simple call flow here uh, we can have different uh, calls like uh, tracking area updates handover procedures and so on going to the next one uh, this is the maps tool where you can see uh, the screen is changing as it goes across different protocols the first one was s1 ap then diameter and this is the egtp as per this slide you can see the framework is common across all the protocols so it's a single framework application where gui features or any functionality will remains the same only change is the protocol stack so for all the protocols we have the single gui uh, single i mean same features across all the products so it is easy for uh, easy to use and learn and it's even uh, provide you the flexibility of uh, the complete uh, call flow can be seen and uh, you can see the details of each each individual ies which are exchanged in the messages say for the create session request on the right hand side you are seeing the egtp layer and all the details of it like what is the tunnel endpoint identifier what are the msis dn or mc so you will be having an access to each individual field of an ie so we have uh, one more very powerful tool called message editor where uh, you can edit each individual messages you can add the optional parameters or remove it uh, you can even change the values of each individual fields like what is the type of identity whether it is it is going to be a guti or mc what is the value for it so you will be having an access to individual field in the messages through this message editor so this is about uh, configuring the subscribers where you can have multiple subscribers configured with the different informations like mc authentication parameters like key op and what are the rab id is going to be used so now let's concentrate on uh, how the traffic will flow through the packet switch network and how it is simulated using our mobile traffic over gtp so maps will be acting as an a client as a simulated uh, users nothing but so we will be having an a gateway and the simulated web servers uh, so this is a setup uh, if i have to explain then maps will be acting as an e node b with a simulated users this gateway can be serving gateway as well as pdn gateway it can traverse us through different gateways like here i am demonstrating with only single gateway 
So here we have a pre-captured uh, HTTP files. Say on the first client we have a gl.com.txt or a Google and then Nokia. So once the call is established, the data, the data path is active. So we are going to play back an HTTP traffic text file. Once it reaches the gateway, it is going to forward it to a simulated web servers. So there the respective files will be get loaded again and it is a stateful playback of HTTP. So once the respective files are loaded, it's going to respond to each request initiated by a client. Once the response is received, it's going to load a page. It is like uh, browsing a complete website. So this is how uh, the simulated web traffic can be achieved through the simulated clients and the web servers. And even we are coming up with a HD traffic generator where uh, we can go up to 4 Gbps traffic with all the statistics like what is the number of uh, packets transmitted, received, latency, delay, packet loss. So this is the protocol stack we are going to achieve once uh, with the simulated traffic. 1000 clients is the maximum that you can achieve? Uh, no, we can simulate more than this. Uh, yeah, currently it is completely uh, based on uh, software architecture. So uh, we are uh, depending upon the system uh, architecture. Like if we are going to have an Xeon server, then we can uh, give more number of clients to be simulated. Is it clear? Oh, yes, thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, about uh, this differing this HTTP responses, uh, you want to corrupt this HTTP uh, messages. Zaf? Hello Zaf, can you hear me? Yeah, I think currently uh, we can uh, we can corrupt the controlling messages like attach request or attach accept any controlling messages we are able to insert an error or uh, corrupt any byte of it and then send it across. On the HTTP side, currently we are not corrupting the frames. But if that is a requirement, then we can look into it and uh, support of corrupting this HTTP re responses. But then I think there is one more question. What is the maximum throughput capacity number of clients? Yeah, uh, that is all. Like we are able to uh, go up to 4 Gbps currently. Okay. Yeah, this slide uh, explains about how the load can be generated uh, on a LTE network. So this is a tool for generating the uh, load where you will be having a different patterns uh, from where the load can be generated like fixed or a ramp. So you have to define uh, what is the minimum call rate and the maximum call rate and define the duration for each uh, hop. Say for a stepwise you have to say what is the next uh, hop and the call duration for which it has to withstand there. Uh, yes, Jeff, I mean, uh, we are testing on it Windows 10 and uh, we will be uh, concluding it very soon. Yeah, I was explaining uh, here the load can be generated with the different patterns where you will be uh, ha generating the load in terms of maximum simultaneous calls or you will be able to achieve what is the number of calls per second you can achieve through this. Here are the few statistics windows uh, which will be uh, provided with maps where you can see the overall statistics. It's a kind of global statistics where you will be seeing what is the total number of calls has been made, what is the number of active calls, completed calls and the past calls and the calls per second. 
below is the pie chart where it displays uh, the percentage of passed and the failed calls on the right hand side you can see the statistics uh, where you will be seeing the calls per second and uh, simultaneous calls graph going to the next slide uh, it's going about the message statistics where you will be having an counter for each message uh, that is being transmitted or received for every message that is being transmitted from a maps application or received to a maps application or even you will be having an error transmission count where uh, if any message uh, will be retransmitted if there is no response received for it within a particular time so you will be having an error transmission count also so one more important feature is a uh, scheduler where users can schedule their own test cases uh, and they can define the duration of test has to be run okay and uh, there are different uh, options available for it, uh, scheduling the test like it can be scheduled on a daily basis or it has to be only once it has to run and then produce the report and mainly uh, it even supports uh, how the call should be generated whether it is a load generation or it is just a manual call generation where you will be uh, testing the functionality on a daily basis and these configuration can be saved and they can run the multiple test cases uh, without the user intervention so they can configure different test cases to be run and define the duration and the start time so that will automatically uh, start running the test and produce the results the next uh, feature is remote maps as in the video we explained uh, remote maps is a very uh, flexible tool where you will be having an access to a different uh, systems where maps is running with a different nodes so you will be having an a centralized uh, control for multiple maps applications which you will be handling remotely and we have the options to send the even reports to the database uh, access via the web interface so whatever uh, this is maps going to simulate you can send the information about the signaling or the any information about the call will be sent to a database from there you will be having an a web access uh, to see all the information you can analyze it offline you can define the kpis so that uh, you will be uh, sure about what is the number of calls uh, placed on this particular mc or how many bearers are established on this particular session so you will be having an uh, flexibility to define your own kpis uh, if the records are sent to database this is about uh, support of uh, cli uh, functionality to uh, integration with the maps so maps is enhanced with uh, command line capability okay where uh, it can be integrated into an automated test environment such as python dot net or a tcl or any third party application such as test shell where user has to write his own scripts uh, to achieve this we will be having this multi user support and controlling uh, multiple map servers whenever this is integrated with uh, this command line applications few of the supported uh, clients are this tcl python java and vb clients so this even provides the flexibility that uh, different users can log in and access to the uh, same uh, maps and conduct their testing so this is about uh, the analyzing of uh, lte interfaces or lte protocol as uh, you can see this is com quite complete uh, network architecture where we are uh, defining wherever packet scan can fit and analyze a different interfaces so you can see uh, there are different interfaces like if you concentrate on the lte it will be x2 s1 mme s11 even the data path like s1 u s5 s8 sgis and if you go across s6 a s13 and the different interfaces on the 3g network so the packet scan is a flexible tool where uh, it will provide you the major details like if if you take a voice call then it will be giving you the mos scores of what is the rtp traffic and other other things with the graphical interfaces 
if you come across gtp it will be uh, showing you what is the gtp packet scaring inside it uh, it it will provide you the cdr capability call detail records and it can analyze all the interfaces on the lte network so this is a, a gui of uh, lte protocol analyzer packet scan where you can see a uh, few of the lte calls being captured you can see the decode of each messages so the first pane is a summary pane the second one is the complete uh, decoded pane and the last one is the cdr where you will be having a uh, call information like whether the call status is completed or not which is the protocol yeah it is going to provide you the what is the call duration uh, what is the destination and the originating addresses yeah uh, it even provides you what is the important parameters like what is the enode bs1 api id what is the mc numbers and different parameters so this analysis tool can be useful in analyzing a different calls of lt and understanding each individual fields the advantage is it can even provide you the offline analysis you can save the traces and then uh, open it offline and then analyze it think that's it from our side thank you so it was a question about the throughput that it can generate is 4 uh, gigabits per second yes yeah uh, it is the current uh, uh, currently we have tested up to 4 gigabits per second and we are trying to scale high up to 10 gigabits per second uh yes maps can emulate the mme yeah that's what uh, on the epc side we can emulate anything so gl doesn't deal with only rf interfaces other than that epc side we can simulate any interfaces so, so for example you can run the the maps uh, without an mme and you will emulate the mme to set up the call and everything i also had a question about what is the uh, typical uh, server how well you need the capacity to support that application uh yeah currently it depends upon uh, what is the load you are looking for so we uh, generally uh, prefer only for the functional testing or a feature testing it will be core i7 with 8 gb ram uh if you want the load then uh, we are quoting xeon servers okay yeah because uh, we will be depending upon the number of cores that a uh, system will be having to generate the load Yeah, current implementation is uh, LTE protocol analyzer can show you the ladder diagram of complete call, uh, but the call has to be completed for it. It is like whenever the call is active, we are not uh, updating the ladder diagram. But once it is completed, we are updating the ladder diagram completely. And about uh, installing it on a virtual machine, yes, uh, we can install it on a virtual machine. Yes, yeah, support. Uh, we'll provide support uh, uh, from all the three or four offices. Uh, we have a um, office in India, and we have office in USA also. So support should not be a problem. We'll be able to give provide uh, technical support over the phone, email, or through web chat. Yeah, about confirmance test. Like we don't have the confirmance suit uh, ready. Yeah, but it is completely a script-based application, so uh, you can write uh, the confirmant uh, test cases uh, through a scripting. Uh, and we are even thinking of coming up with a LTE confirmant test suit. I think it is on our roadmap. Uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, you can write back to us. We'll get back to you by mail. Thank you, Vandan. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Yeah, thank you, everyone.